Shalom everyone, it's Elia Ben Yaakov uh, I'm going to do a Torah portion for this week Today is the third evening of the ninth month We say Toda Yahweh for uh, blessing us to wake up To see another day, thank you for your Tanakh Thank you for your Torah, Ketuvim, Neveim Thank you for uh, all of the Neveim who have come and given your divine Devar to us uh, For us to live it in, in the fish to search out the Dida'at of Yahuwah, which is the knowledge, the knowing of He, the existing One. And everything that is created, we know that His name is glorious. His name is worthy of more praise than any other name in the earth. And that is why we speak yod heh yod However you choose to say it, you know, we know that it means He that is existing. So today we're going to do a Torah portion. Uh, as I turned into the Torah, I am going to translate an entire section. Uh, for one, it stuck out to me because uh, I have dreadlocks. So yeah, we're going to cover uh, a Nazarite vow. Or as we know in the Hebrew, uh, a Nazir. Okay? We're going to start in Bamidbar, uh, the 6th chapter, 1 through 5. Okay, and uh, we're going to break this down in parts. Okay, so this is part 1. We're doing chapter 6. Uh, for our weekly Torah reading, thank you for tuning in. It is Elia bin Yaakov. For all of those who have subscribed and all of those who will subscribe, I thank you so much for tuning in. We're going to start off in 6 and 1. What we're going to do is we're going to read through it, exactly what it says. We're going to read the Hebrew. And I'm going to give you the uh, concrete uh, uh, interpretation of what I come up with. You know, it's not my own interpretation. It is an actual what the meaning of the words are. I use the Hebrew grammar, not just going to Strong's numbers, uh, you know, to find out what the word is. I use Hebrew grammar to understand in which ways the words can be used to better distinguish uh, a proper interpretation, which may be the same, but yet I still write it in concrete form, as in the way that the Hebrews would see it, not according to Western philo uh, philosophy, Western thinking, or Western uh, theology. Uh, we're going to go into it and we're going to read it and then we're going to do like a word study to pinpoint on certain words in each Torah portion. And this is the format that I'm going to follow from here on out on the Black Hebrew channel. Okay, so we're going to go into uh, verses 6. Okay, the first uh, chapter 6, I'm sorry. The first verse, we're in Bar Midbar or the book of Numbers. And it goes, Wadaber Yawa El Moshe Lemor. And Yahweh talked to Moshe, saying, Deber el ben Yasharel wamata alehim. Speak to the children of Yasharel, and you say to them, Ish o isha ki yifli lindor neder. Surely, if they make a difficult vow for an extended amount of time, Nazir lehazir laiwa, devoted to being a devoted one unto Yahweh. This word, when I said devoted one, it is the word nazir, which means to be devoted one, a consecrated one, a dedicated one, separated one, however you choose to understand, interpret it. Six and three goes on to say, Mi yain we shekar yazir. He should separate himself from wine and intoxicating drink. Chometz yain we chometz shekal, vinegar wine and leavened intoxicating drink. Lo yiste he should not drink. Wekal mishrat anavim lo yiste, and every minister should not drink grapes. Wa anavim lachim we veshim. Nor use grapes as food, nor dried up lo yokel. He should not eat. So we see it indicates that one that makes this vow, a devoted, to be devoted to a dedicated vow, a serious, a difficult vow to Yahweh, who we know to be Elohim and our ruler and our master, our Adonai. It says that he should separate himself from wine, intoxicating drink, vinegar wine, which we know to be white wine and liquor. And then it says vinegar wine and leavened intoxicating drink, which we would know common sense is what red wine and uh, beer. 
He also says we should not even drink grape juice. It says drink grapes, and we know that indicates grape juice, nor eat grapes, nor dried up grapes, which are raisins. We continue on in 6 and 4. It goes, Kol Nizro. All the days of his consecration, or of his devotion, or of his dedication. Mikol Asher Ye Ase. According to all that is to be done, Migefin Hayain Mechar Sanim. Even the wine from the vine of unripened grapes, Warzag Lo Yokel. And even its skin he should not eat. So he was letting us know that there is no form of grapes, neither white grapes, yellow grapes, red grapes, nor white grapes. We are not to intact to, to but pretty much if you take a, a, a nazir or a vow of a consecrated vow to the Most High Yahweh, we know that we are to not consume these things because Torah said. 6 and 5, closing out, it says, Kal yeme neder nizro. All the days of his period of consecration, the ar lo yaavor al rosho. A razor should not be brought over ad melot ha yamim against his head until he finishes the days asher yazir laywa karosh that he consecrates to be set apart to Yahweh. Yiye gadal ferra shar rosho. Sar rosho, I'm sorry. He should grow intertwined hair of his head. So we see it says that during the period of his consecration, or him separating himself to be holy, a razor should not be brought upon his head until he finishes those days. This period of time that we know to be a vow. We say shalom to those ears who have heard the Torah of Yahweh, given by his Hanavi'i uh, Moshe. We're going to do a word study on a couple of words to point out here, because we're speaking about a Nazarite. Now the first word we want to get into is this word vow, which we've translated, I translated as a difficult vow, and I'm going to give you the understanding why. The word translated as vow is yafli. Yafli is an imperfective hefil form of a root word, which means it indicates something will be caused to happen by someone. The root word is fala. This root word means to separate from the usual, to be extraordinary, something that is beyond one's power to do a difficult thing. The feminine root of this word kala, uh, 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 fala, which is actually spelled a little bit different as we see pe lamed ha instead of being pe lamed alef, it means to be distinctive. But overall, this word covers a vow. To make a vow would mean to separate from the usual, to be extraordinary, to do things beyond your power, to do a difficult thing, to make yourself distinctive. When we say that we are devoted to the Most High, some people say that we are devout Christians, we are devout Hebrews, we are devout Jews, we are devout Muslim. I speak to all of my Abrahamic brothers, but understand that when we make a vow, our God and the Father, the God of Abraham, our Father, no matter what house you claim to be under, mention that when we make a difficult thing, that is a vow. When we place ourselves, when we cause us some, cause something to happen, that is separate from the usual. The next word is actually a phrase. That was used, but it's from the same root. We're going to look at Nazir le Hazir. This phrase comes from the root word Nazar, meaning to dedicate. Dedicate meaning to uphold something as sacred. Okay? To, end, to uh, declare something as sacred. The noun form of this word Nazar is a Nazir. Which actually indicates a person that upholds or is devoted to sacred things. A nazir. Which would indicate who we are. 
So when someone sees you with your locks and they ask you, why do you grow your locks? You can explain to them that you're making a fala, a difficult vow for one. You're doing things that is beyond your power in order to get close to your mighty power, to your El Shaddai, who we know to be Abakadush, the Yahweh. What are you? I am a Nazir, which indicates that I have done a Nazar. I have dedicated myself as sacred and to be sacred unto who? My creator, Yahweh. The word Lehazir indicates the act of being a Nazir. So the duties of being a Le Nazir, a, a Nazir, is what Lehazir means. So to say Nazir Lehazir, that's why we translated it as to devote. To be a devoted one unto Yahweh. So it would mean to uphold, to for one per for a person to uphold or to devote himself to be separate according to the sacred things. We're going to break down another five, uh, excuse me, another phrase in a verse and a word study that came from verse five to point out certain words. This one here, it is more indicated towards the locks. And what to grow now we have identified who we are and why we are doing this these locks the first word that we're going to look at is gadel it is from the ending phrase gadel ferra shear rosho gadel is a root word actually gadal with a broad meaning the basic meaning is to grow up intertwined or to grow up to be tangled the Hebrew definition, in biblical being the only Shemitic language that does not necessarily indicate it meaning to grow up intertwined, but only to grow up and figuratively to become great or large. The Arabic Hebrew meaning growing up intertwined or growing intertwined, its word indicates a cord, which indicates strength or being firm. But we noticed in Biblical Hebrew, Gedalim means twisted cords, the plural form of Gadal or Gadel, meaning twisted cords. A Gedalim is what we know as our tassels. The Arabic Hebrew counterpart means plaited locks. So, in coincidence, we could only understand that when it says to grow up, Knowing that the stem of the root is to grow up intertwine, and the plural gedalim indicates twisted cords or tassels, we know that it's speaking of rooted hair. Why? Because the next word, para, means first to be a leader or to lead. Okay? But it also indicates long hair, which has been translated as locks. Yes, for those who say it could mean just to have long hair, not dreadlocks, of course, if para was by itself or somewhere else. But knowing that it's being followed by this verb, I mean, being uh, preceded by the verb gadel, which means to grow up intertwined, gadel para would mean to grow intertwined hair, long locks of intertwined hair. How we know hair, the next word, seyar, actually indicates hair. So the phrase, gadel para seyar, means to grow long intertwined locks of hair. The next word, rosho, his head. Rosh being the root, meaning head. The Y ending actually indicates his his head, Gadel para seyar rosh rosho, to grow long locks of intertwined hair where? On his head. That's what he should do. So when those say that this did not indicate locks, for only the fact that the ancient Hebrew, Moshe himself, would have been of an Ethiopic or Cushitic background, not only Shemitic, through connection, but he was from Africa. So was Shem. Dark-skinned people with knotty hair. And this would mean to grow the plaited locks or to grow the intertwined hair of the head. 
This is why we grow this. But I also want to point out something, point out something else. This word para, its other meaning can actually mean to be a leader. Okay. Most of the leaders that we know, Yeshua, when I say Yeshua bin Yusuf, Yeshua bin Nun, we know Moshe, we even know Paul of the New Testament, Shamuel, we know of Samson, and many others who have had locks, who indicated these locks, this para, this gadel para, gadelin para, indicates intertwined locks of hair. Long intertwined locks of hair. This concludes part one of the study of Anazir and our Torah reading of Bamidbar, the sixth chapter. This has been chapter six, verses one through five. Stay tuned closely for part two of this Torah reading. It is Eliyah bin Yaakov. Shalom. Protect us from the evil. Hail to the king, lords of love. May he protect us from evil.